Hello and welcome back to another one of my videos. Um, I thought I would do a video on two stroke principles today since I had half a crankcase, a spare bore, a spare head and a spare piston I could actually explain not just verbally but actually um, visually as well which I always find is a good thing to show people is the visual side of it as well gets it in the head quicker but um, I was surprised they actually haven't done one before so yeah <laughs> But anyway, we shall start off by going through this, the parts of the two-stroke engine and actually how they differ from a four-stroke. Now, if we take the cylinder head for example, so we're working down from the cylinder head, um, it, the cylinder head in a two-stroke differs quite a bit from a four-stroke engine. It actually has a lot less roles to play. Now, within a four-stroke engine, the cylinder head is responsible for the intake of... Um, gases into the engine, the control of gases out of the engine, so exhaust gases. It's um, there to um, supply lubrication to the camshafts, it's there to supply cooling. Now, and also there to actually provide a wall for the combustion to actually force itself against and then to direct it towards the piston. Now, with the two-stroke cylinder head, the only role this plays is to direct the combustion down towards the um, the piston itself to turn the actual thermal energy of the combustion into mechanical energy which the piston uses up and down. It um, takes heat away from the combustion via um, fins on top or water cooling if it's um, a more posh engine than this. Um, it has the spark plug here and also supplies the air for the spark plug and also um, the actual um, mountain holes for the studs to go through to actually force pressure on the gasket that would be there to provide a seal for combustion. Pretty simple affair. Now the cylinder bore on the other hand actually takes over some of the roles that um, a cylinder head would do in a four stroke. Uh, main one being the actual direction of gases in and out of the engine. So. Here we have the two transfer ports which direct um, the fuel-air mixture from the crankcase up and into the cylinder. And we also have the exhaust port out here which yet again directs um, the exhaust gases out into the atmosphere or down, out of the exhaust I should say. Now in conjunction with the piston, um, the piston acts as a valve which actually shuts off um, the transfer ports and the exhaust port depending on whereabouts in the cylinder it is at any given time. Now moving down into the crankcase here, the crankcase actually plays a very vital role within a two-stroke. Now in a two-stroke when the piston is down and we have the inlet port and exhaust port open, if the inlet port was just fed straight out into the atmosphere with a carburetor of course there would be no pressure difference in between the exhaust port or the there would be no pressure difference I should say in between the cylinder and the external air pressure so that means there would be no movement of mass or air between the two so no fuel air mixture would actually be put into the cylinder now because of this two strokes have to have a higher than ambient pressure in the inlet side of the engine than it does at the exit size of the engine actually make or to encourage that flow of air into the um, the cylinder. <coughs> now to do this the actual crankcase here is a compressor. Now as we shall s to actually demonstrate this we shall go through a full cycle of the two stroke. Now if we push the piston up just until it shut off its um, transfer ports and exhaust port. We have this valve in the crankcase. Now this is a disc valve engine so the valve is actually a rot rotary disc which shuts off and opens this inlet here which is to the carburetor. On other two strokes this can be a reed valve working on pressure or even the piston itself. But we shall stick with this mechanism, it's all the same. So as the piston goes up um, the inlet valve here opens. Now because the piston is a sealed unit and it's going up it's making the mass of the crankcase bigger or the volume of the crankcase I should say bigger. 
So this means there's a negative pressure within the crankcase which draws the air fuel mixture through this um, valve here and into the crankcase itself. Now as it goes up and it um, ignites its charge, the piston is forced back down. Now as this happens, the actual valve shuts off. Now because of this, no fuel air mixture can get back out of the crankcase and into the carburetor. Now, because none of the transfer ports open at this time are the exhaust ports, this, the crankcase is now a sealed unit. Now, as the piston goes down, the volume in the crankcase is actually getting smaller, so that, and because the, there's the same amount of fuel air mixture in here, the pressure within the crankcase is building up. <coughs> as the piston starts to go down, the exhaust port opens. Now, this other than letting the exhaust gases get out of the actual cylinder and into the exhaust it also releases a pressure wave down the exhaust pipe now with two strokes the exhaust pipes are tuned to actually bounce this wave back but we shall get onto that later so remember that now as the piston starts going down it starts to actually uncover the transfer ports in the side of the cylinder which is around the back of here when this happens because the air pressure within the cylinder now is at ambient and the crankcase pressure is at above ambient pressure the actual fuel air mixture is forced through the transfer ports and into the cylinder itself. Now because the transfer ports and the exhaust ports are open at the same time fuel air mixture can freely flow from the actual transfer ports straight out of the exhaust ports. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, as we said before, there's a pressure wave being sent from the cylinder down the exhaust, and the exhaust has bounced that back. Now, depending on how the exhaust is tuned to what RPM, this pulse wave will meet the <coughs> will meet the escape and exhaust the the escape and fuel air mixture, and actually push it back into the um, combust um, the cylinder. So it's basically acting as like an air valve. We should say. Like as an well, an air buffer, it's pushing the fuel air mixture back in. Now, then the piston starts going back up, the uh, the valve opens again, so that means um, fuel air mixture can start drawing in. Um, the transfer ports and exhaust ports are shut, and the cycle starts over again. Now, like I say, the crank not many people actually see the crankcase as a compressor well it is the crankcase is there to actually generate negative pressure to draw in the fuel and then it actually create positive um, pressure to transfer the fuel through the transfer ports and into the combustion chamber or the cylinder I should say and that's basically it that's a simple off there'll be like I say there's different variations um, like I say there's this is a disc valve engine so the valve is actually a mechanical mechanism driven off the crank um, you have reed valves that actually um, are opened and shut depending on the pressure so as the piston goes up um, the pressure in the actual crankcase is decreasing so this means that the pressure in here would be below ambient pressure and because with a reed valve if the pressure at one side of it is more than the other the reed valve will open and the pressure will go into the negative pressure but as soon as the piston starts going down and this pressure starts to increase in the crankcase it starts to push against this reed valve and it shuts and that means the pressure in the crankcase can then build now with some engines as well we have um, a thing that's called piston controlled induction where basically there's a hole in the piston itself and um, the actual intake is going to the side of the bore here and the piston itself is actually shutting off and opening the actual valve so it's acting as the valve itself now other than that there's not really that much to say I have said it all that is the full cycle of the two stroke very simple engine but the more you go into it if you, if you want to get, get into two strokes trust me it's not you'll you'll get into thinking it's simple and then you start uncovering this and that fiber acoustics or exhaust systems and um, pressure waves within the intake and also the out um the actual exhaust um everything and then we've got the lubrication system which is another difference with um 
two strokes because the crankcase has been used as the the intake for the f air fuel mixture it can't be used as basically an area where lubrication is kept and it can't have a sump underneath so this means the oil and the oil actually has to be mixed in with the air fuel mixture injected directly into the the main bearings and actually fed up with the fuel to provide the lubrication for the engine which is one of the two strokes major downfalls along with um, fuel air mixture escaping out the exhaust because the oil adds to emissions so does the unburnt hydrocarbons of the fuel but other than that and with the improvements with direct injection two strokes they're actually starting to come back they're starting to have a fighting chance but anyway that's that video um, I hope um, it's enlightened you a bit I'm sorry about my throat I have got a bit of a chest infection at the moment and I'm coughing up my lungs every two seconds so yeah I shall leave it there and um, comment in the box if um, you have any comments I don't mind and um, keep safe as always and see you soon